Greetings. Nowadays, a lot of issues abound with regard to COVID-19 prevention and treatment, including vaccination. We've heard about the so-called miracle cures and medications that are forwarded by a lot of different groups. Now, of course, there are a lot of potential dangers of recommending these miracle cures without solid proof or evidence as they are not really harmless as advocates would argue. And there are issues that I'm worried about. Number one is that they give the patients the false assurance that they're on this medication and therefore they're being protected against COVID-19. As a result, they downgrade their social distancing. They're not as keen in terms of masking and they're not as careful in terms of their social interaction. Second, these miracle cures may actually result in what we call as delayed consultation because most of these drugs may actually mask the symptoms. Therefore, the patients feel good in spite of the fact that their oxygenation is already bad. And of course, what I don't like about these miracle cures is when they are being touted as an exchange to vaccination because these miracle cures will actually discourage vaccination. And of course, remember, I am for vaccination and nothing is 100% safe. So for today, we'll talk about the safety of one specific vaccine called the AstraZeneca vaccine. So what now for AstraZeneca vaccine? We've heard about news reports. People are so worried. Is it safe to get vaccinated with AstraZeneca? Remember, our country only has two major COVID vaccines nowadays. It's the Sinovac and of course the AstraZeneca. What then is my risk to get blood clot if given this vaccine? We all know that there are several countries that have received AstraZeneca vaccination. If you look closely at that, approximately 82 million vaccine doses have already been administered as of April 7, 2021 in the European Union. In Germany alone, approximately one quarter of the vaccine recipients have received AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, the full vaccination schedule of AstraZeneca requires two doses, but recently, because of these reports of blood clots, regulators in France and Germany have recommended that people under the age of 55 who have one dose get a different vaccine for, this, for their second shot. Any vaccine is not 100% safe. But remember, the purpose of the vaccination is simple, is to prevent patients from getting severe COVID and to prevent patients from dying from COVID-19 infection. The issue of blood clots has been ongoing. Recently, the European Medicines Agency reported that they find that there's a possible link to very rare cases of unusual blood clots with low blood platelets among patients who received COVID-19 vaccine from AstraZeneca. However, they confirmed that the overall benefit risk remains positive and that most cases reported had occurred in women under the age of 60 within the two weeks of vaccination. But based on the currently available evidence, specific risk factors have not been confirmed. So if you look closely at the analysis on the risk, of AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine and the risk of this thrombosis, in a medium risk exposure, the vaccine was most likely to cause serious harm in the 20 to 29 year old group, since you will see that the risk of COVID-19 is also low 
and the seer harm the seer's harm is also at the same level then most likely this is the group that i will not recommend giving astrazeneca covid-19 vaccine clearly therefore the risk is higher compared to the benefit if you talk about the 20 to 29 year old group and i think this is one reason that certain countries recommend that this is the age group that should not be given the AstraZeneca vaccine. When this EMEA report came about, the International Society on Thrombosis and Homeostasis also made their statement regarding blood clots associated with the AstraZeneca vaccine. They are reminding the public that COVID-19 itself as a disease is associated with an increased risk of hospitalization and death. The reported blood clot is rare. Overall benefits of the vaccine in preventing COVID-19 still outweigh the risk of thromboembolic side effects. So what then do the experts recommend? As I've said, the guidance varies. The UK's Joint Committee recommends that all those who have received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine should continue to be offered the second dose, irrespective of the age. The second dose will be very important because it will provide longer lasting protection against COVID-19. France health regulator recommends that people under the age of 55 who have received their first dose should not get the second dose but instead should be given an alternative or mixed platform a Pfizer or a Moderna for their second shot it also advises a gap of 12 weeks between the first and the second shots in these circumstances and that they fear there, they have no reason to fear specific adverse events if you had the first AstraZeneca job and then switch to an mRNA job for the second. However, this recommendation is still of no data. In our country, the National COVID-19 Vaccination Operations Center had this advisory that all possible vaccine recipients aged below 60 who are scheduled to be given their first dose of AstraZeneca shall be deferred or provided with a Sinovac vaccine as deemed appropriate based on the Department of Health guidelines. All individuals vaccinated with the first dose of AstraZeneca are then encouraged to wait for their guidance from the Department of Health on the administration of the second dose of AstraZeneca vaccine as we are still evaluating available data. Our country only has two available vaccines nowadays. It's Sinovac and AstraZeneca. Those who were given the first dose should wait because most likely we'll have more data to support whether true enough AstraZeneca do cause these problems and should be stopped or this is just a false early information with regard to a very rare side effect and therefore can be given again for those patients. Anyway, the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine is still due three months after the first dose. But as a precaution, those who are about to receive the AstraZeneca vaccine, people of any age who are at high risk of blood clots because of their medical condition, should only be given this vaccine if the benefits outweigh the risk and that people, this patient should talk to their doctor or pharmacist before getting the AstraZeneca job if they have the problems with bleeding or bruising, if also they are on blood thinning medications. Patients likewise should seek medical assistance immediately if they have the following symptoms after they were given the AstraZeneca vaccine, shortness of breath, chest pain, any swelling of the leg, persistent abdominal pain, some neurological symptoms, or tiny blood spots under the skin, 
beyond the site of injection. The recommendation from France that those who were given the first dose of AstraZeneca vaccine be given a different mRNA second dose vaccine has actually not been studied. So the question is, can we really mix and match different platforms? Can we give Sinovac and then give AstraZeneca next? Can we give AstraZeneca's first dose and wait for the Moderna or Pfizer next? Remains to be seen. But this is what we know. Health experts at present generally agree that most likely mixing and matching of different vaccines should be safe. But remember, we need clinical trials and they're still ongoing. So the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention maintains that the safety and efficacy of a mixed product series have not been evaluated. The good news is this, that all these vaccines are coding for the same spike protein. So therefore, there are clinical trials and data seeing that you can mix and match these different vaccine platforms. So you may be asking, how serious how common or how rare are these blood clots associated with AstraZeneca vaccine? So to put you into context, it is best I put this in a graphical form. Let's look at things in context. This is your risk of blood clots. If you got AstraZeneca, it's four cases in a million or 0.0004%. Okay, that's how low and how rare. If you're on birth control pill, because you're a 24 year old, for whatever reason, the risk to develop blood clots is higher. 500 to 1200 cases in 1 million. If you are a smoker, yeah, there's 1,763 cases per million smokers, or that's roughly around 0.18%. If you don't get the vaccine because you're worried about the vaccine side effects, then this is your risk. If you get COVID infection, your risk to suffer from blood clot is significantly higher, around 165,000 cases per million or 16.5%. Simply put, your risk to suffer from a blood clot due to AstraZeneca vaccine is exceedingly rare compared to your risk to develop blood clot if you develop COVID-19. Dr. Salvana, who is an infectious disease expert, clearly summarized it all. The risk of severe COVID-19 in vulnerable populations is around 5 to 10%. The risk of severe COVID-19 after you are fully vaccinated in vulnerable patient is less than 1%. What does this mean? That your risk of getting a clot from COVID-19 infection is more than 3,000 times higher than that of getting a clot from AstraZeneca vaccine in vulnerable populations. That's a 300,000% higher risk of clots without the vaccine than with the vaccine in the most vulnerable. Our country is now faced with limited supply of vaccines. What we have is Sinovac and AstraZeneca vaccine. Until we know more, those who have been given the AstraZeneca first dose can wait because they still have around two to three months before their second dose. Most likely we have more information that AstraZeneca in general is safe. For those who are still awaiting their first vaccine, then most likely if you're still worried about it, if you have the availability of Sinovac, then get it. If not, and only AstraZeneca is available, again, get it. Your risk is extremely low compared to your risk if you're in the vulnerable group to suffer from COVID-19 and suffer from the complications of this disease. Again, thank you for listening.